So you somehow miraculously wrapped it back to the very beginning uh, of when we were talking about the human, um, the beauty of the human genome. So I think this is the right time, uh, unless we want to go for a six to eight hour conversation. We're going to have to talk again, but I think for now to wrap it up, um, this is the right time to talk about the uh, the biggest, most ridiculous question of all, meaning of life. Off mic, you mentioned to me that you. Um, you had your 42nd birthday, 42nd uh, being a very special, absurdly special number. Uh, and you had a kind of um, a get together with friends to discuss the meaning of life. So let me ask you, in your, as a biologist, as a computer scientist, and as a human, what is the meaning of life? I've been asking this question for a long time. Uh, ever since my 42nd birthday, uh, but well before that, in even planning the Meaning of Life Symposium. And uh, Symposium, Sim means together, Posi actually means to drink together. So Symposium is actually a drinking party. <laughs> so, so the Can you actually elaborate about this Meaning of Life Symposium <laughs> that you put together? It's so, like the most genius idea I've ever heard. So 42 is obviously the answer to life, the universe and everything from the Hitchcock's Guide to the Galaxy. And uh, as I was turning 42, I've, I've had the theme for every one of my birthdays. When I was turning 32, it's 100000 in binary. So I celebrated my 100,000th binary, binary birthday. And I had a theme of going back 100,000 years, you know, let's dress something in the last 100,000 years. Anyway, it was... We've, really? I've always had these. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> you're such an interesting human being. Okay, that's awesome. I've always had these sort of uh, sort of numerology um, related announcements for my for my birthday parties. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what came out of that uh, meaning of life symposium is that I basically asked forty two of my colleagues, forty two of my friends, forty two of my you know collaborators to basically give seven minute species on the meaning of life, each from their perspective. And I really encourage you to go there because it's mind boggling that every single person said a different answer. Every single person started with, I don't know what the meaning of life is, but, and then gave <laughs> this beautifully eloquently answer, eloquent answer. And they were all different, but they all were consistent with each other and mutually synergistic and together forming a beautiful view of what it means to be human in many ways. Some people talked about the loss of their loved one, their life partner for many, many years and how their life changed through that. Some people talked about the origin of life. Some people talked about the difference between purpose and meaning. I'll, you know, maybe quote one of the answers which is this linguistics uh, professor, friend of mine at Harvard, who basically said that she was gonna, she's Greek as well. And she said, I will give a very Pythian answer. So Pythia was the oracle of Delphi, who would basically give these very cryptic answers, very short, but interpretable in many different ways. There was this whole set of priests who were tasked with interpreting what Pythia had said. And very often you would not get a clean interpretation, but she said, I will be like Pythia and give you a very short and multiply interpretable answer. But unlike her, I will actually also give you three interpretations. Okay. And she said, the answer to the meaning of life is become one. And the first interpretation is like a child, become one year old with the excitement of discovering everything about the world. Second interpretation, in whatever you take on, become one, the first, the best, excel, drive yourself to perfection for every one of your tasks and become one when people are separate, become one, come together, learn to understand each other. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's an answer. And one way to summarize this whole meaning of life symposium is that the very symposium was illustrating the quest for meaning, which might itself be the meaning of life. This constant quest for something sublime, something human, something intangible, some you know aspect of what defines us as a species and as an individual. Both the quest of me as a person through my own life, but 
The meaning of life could also be the meaning of all of life. What is the whole point of life? Why life? Why life itself? Because we've been talking about the history and evolution of life, but we haven't talked about why life in the first place. Is life inevitable? Is life part of physics? Does life transcend physics? But fighting, by fighting against entropy, by compartmentalizing and increasing concentrations rather than diluting away. Is life um, a, a distinct entity in the universe beyond the traditional, very simple physical rules that govern gravity and you know electromagnetism and all of these forces? Is life another force? Is there a life force? Is there a unique kind of set of principles that emerge? Of course, built on top of the hardware of physics, but is it sort of a new layer of software or a new layer of a computer system? So, so that's at the level of, you know, big questions. There's another aspect of gratitude, of basically what I, you know, what I like to say is uh, during this pandemic, I've basically worked from 6 a.m. until 7 p.m. every single day, nonstop, including Saturday and Sunday. I've basically broken all boundaries of where life personal life begins and work life, you know, ends. And uh, that has been exhilarating for me. Just, just the intellectual pleasure that I get from a day of exhaustion, where at the end of the day, my brain is hurting. I'm telling my wife, wow, I was useful today. And there's a certain pleasure that comes from feeling useful. And there's a certain pleasure that comes from feeling grateful. So I've written this little sort of prayer for my kids to say at bedtime every night, where they basically say, thank you, God, for all you have given me and give me the strength to give unto others with the same love that you have given unto me. We as a species are so special the only ones who worry about the meaning of life. And maybe that's what makes us human. And what I like to say to my wife and to my students during this pandemic work extravaganza <laughs> is every now and then they ask me, but how do you do this? And I'm like, I'm a workaholic. I love this. This is me yeah. in the most unfiltered way. The ability to do something useful, to feel that my brain's being used, to interact with the smartest people on the planet day in, day out, and to help them discover aspects of the human genome, of the human brain, of human disease and the human condition that no one has seen before with data that we're capturing that has never been observed. And there's another aspect, which is on the personal life. Many people say, oh, I'm not gonna have kids, why bother? I can tell you as a father, they're missing half the picture, if not the whole picture. Teaching my kids about my view of the world and watching through their eyes, the naivete with which they start and the sophistication with which they end up, the understanding that they have of not just the natural world around them, but of me too the unfiltered criticism that you get from your own children that knows no bounds of honesty. And I've grown components of my heart that I didn't know I had until you sense that fragility, that vulnerability of the children that immense love and passion, the unfiltered egoism that we as adults learn how to hide so much better. Yeah. It's just this back of emotions that tell me about the raw materials that make a human being and how these raw materials can be arranged with more sophistication that we learn through life to become truly human adults. There's something so beautiful about seeing that progression between them, the complexity of the language growing as more neural connections are formed, to, to, to realize that the hardware 
is getting rearranged as their software is getting implemented on that hardware. That their frontal cortex continues to grow for another 10 years. There's neuronal Magic. connections that are continuing to form, new neurons that actually get replicated and, and formed. And it's, it's just incredible that we have these, not just you grow the hardware for 30 years and then you feed it all of the knowledge. No, no, the knowledge is fed throughout and is shaping these neural connections as they're forming. So seeing that transformation from either your own blood or from an adopted child is the most beautiful thing you can do as a human being. And it completes you, it completes that path, that journey. The create life, oh sure, that's at conception, that's easy. But create human life to add the human part, that takes decades of compassion, of sharing, of love and of anger, and of impatience and patience. And as a parent, I think I've become a very different kind of teacher. Because again, I'm a professor, my first role is to bring adult human beings into a you know, more mature level of adulthood, where they learn not just to do science, but they learn the process of discovery and the process of collaboration, the process of sharing, the process of conveying the knowledge, of encapsulating something incredibly complex and, and sort of giving it up in sort of bite-sized chunks that the rest of humanity can appreciate. I tell my students all the time, if you, you know, like when an apple fall, when, 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 a, when, a, when a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to listen, has it really fallen? The same way you, you do this awesome research. If you write an impenetrable paper that no one will understand, it's as if you never did the awesome research. So conveying of knowledge, conveying this lateral transfer that I was talking about at the very beginning of sort of human humanity and sort of the, the sharing of information, all of that has gotten so much more rich by seeing human beings grow in my own home because that, that makes me a better parent and that makes me a better teacher and a better mentor to the nurturing of my adult children, which are my research group. First of all, beautifully <laughs> put, connects beautifully to the vertical and the horizontal inheritance of ideas that we talked about at the very beginning. I don't think there's a better way to end it uh, on this poetic and powerful note. Um, Manolis, thank you so much for talking to us. It's a huge honor. We'll have to talk again about the origin of life about uh, epigenetics, epigenomics, and uh, some of the incredible research you're doing. Truly an honor. Thanks so much for talking today. Thank you, such a pleasure. It's such a pleasure. I mean, your, your questions are outstanding. I've had such a blast here. I can't <laughs> wait to be back. Awesome.